Good morning, everybody. Um, I, that was a short introduction by Zach because I've got quite a lot of things to show you and I didn't want him to be too long because there's a lot to go through. So I'm not going to talk too much about the wines. I'm at table 139. And so if you guys want to taste any more, um, you're welcome to come and see me at my stand. I'd rather tell you more about Valero. Um, just to start with, I'm going to show you a 30 second video clip just to get you in the mood and to show you what South Africa will, pictures of our farm and all different aspects of it. Um, we are a family-run vineyard. Um, there's myself. I look after the sales and marketing side. And then my brother, Jeff Greer, who is on the right-hand side there, who looks after our whole winemaking side of our business. And then my cousin, Simon Greer, on the left, um, is in charge of our vineyard, our wildlife sanctuary, all our sustainable um, programs, which I'll make clear to you as we go through. So we have a 180-hectare um, planted to vineyard. Um, when we bought Valera in 1983, um, there was 20 hectares planted to vine and the production was about 4,000 cases. We've now got uh, 400 hectares, of which half we're returning to its natural state, the, and there are 180 planted to vineyard, and then we've got 100,000 cases that we're producing. So we're one of the bigger family-run vineyards in South Africa. Um, we are committed to quality. We might as well shut up shop if we aren't. Um, but along with that innovation, and then we have a whole lot of projects that we started with many years ago, which I'm going to try and take you through as quickly as possible. And then it's not just us. We have a whole extended family. We employ 120 people, many of whom have worked for us for well over 20 years. So we try and make it a place where people want to stay. Um, where we are, we're in the Stellenbosch wine region. Um, if you see the picture on the top, those are the, that's the whole Stellenbosch mountain range on the one side of us. And then looking towards the sea, you get Table Mountain, one of the most famous mountains in the world. Um, and it has False Bay on the one side, Table Bay on the other side. Both those two oceans influence our climate, which is the Mediterranean climate. Um, that's our tasting room. It's quite um, modern. We, get, we open every day. We get a number of visitors, also from the U.S., obviously. Um, and because a big focus of ours is bottle fermented sparkling wine, uh, a lot of our features and tasting room focuses on, on bubbly. Many of our foreign visitors prefer to sit outside because of our beautiful climate, so we also have an outside terrace area with a lot of trees that are hundreds of years old. And then on the vineyard side, um, we pay a lot of um, attention to pruning. We've, been, we've had a, some Italian guys out for the last three years. We've been training our um, vineyard workers to prune to extend the life of our, our vineyard. So basically, we never stop. We're always looking at new methods. Um, we pay a lot of attention to canopy management. We, we don't irrigate, but we have probes all over our vineyard that measure exactly what our water levels are so that we can relieve the vine of stress if we have to. And um, then we have a strong envir environmental approach um, and we biodiversity of wine initiative accredited and interpret, um, and that's, I'll make that clearer as I go along. Um, we haven't used 
insecticides for well over 15 years. So a natural control has come back in place. We have a huge bird life population because of the fact that there's lots for them to eat. Um, we bring in ducks to eat snails. You would have seen on the short video clip in the beginning with snail patrol. Um, we buy in about 800 every year. We have blue crane, which is our, nat our national bird. We have quite a lot of breeding pairs on the property. Um, and then the wine, which is obviously the most important part of this whole thing. We started in 1984. We met a champagne producer called Jean-Louis Denois. And he basically guided us as far as making bottle fermented sparkling. We're one of the top five uh, bottle fermented sparkling wine producers in South Africa. Um, and it's a very important category for us. The tradition brut uh, we have here for tasting, and that's our non vintage Cup Classique. All bottle fermented sparkling in South Africa, which is, it adheres to the minimum quality standards and spends at least 12 months on the lees, is called Cup Classique, the classical Cape method. And we make all the way up to a prestige cuvee. We also make a completely additive free, sulfur free bubbly. Um, and we do have a neck tag which tells people more about that because it's, it's a bit of a niche market product. And then on our whites, um, we have a down-to-earth white, which is a Sauvignon Semillon blend. And the down-to-earth name ties in with our whole environmental, sustainable approach. Plus, it's uh, a consumer-friendly price point. It costs you the same as taking a cab in New York for a couple of blocks at about, I suppose, retail at about $13. Um, and then we have a, a whole range of uh, still wines. We focus more on Chenin Blanc and Sauvignon Blanc. You have got in your, the white wine in one of your glasses, and please feel free to taste as I'm talking, because I'm not going to do a guided tasting. And I probably won't have time for that. Um, the Chenin is a strong focus for us. My brother is, was the found, one of the founding members of the Chenin Blanc Producers Association. We pick it quite ripe, um, so there's always a little bit of botrytis there, which adds a little bit to the... Um, apricot toasty character and, and a little bit of wood but not matured in wood just fermented in wood for a little bit of wood spice which you would pick up on the, on the aftertaste and then the other um, white that's quite important to us is Sauvignon Blanc and we make a reserve of both of those and then a jasmine which is a really aromatic white of Muscat, Riesling and Gewürz on our back labels, we try and tell everybody our stories. Um, our, you'll see on a later slide, our wholesaler is operated by solar, and that's where the natural energy comes. So we've got illustrations on our back labels where people can actually go to the website and look up more about what the stories are about. The duck and snail is obviously the ducks we bring in to eat the snails. It's just to remind our sales team to tell people all our stories. And so in one box, you get a mixture of all those um, stories. It's carried through onto our packaging as well, so on the outer box we also bring through some of the illustrations of our back labels. And then on our reds, um, we have a down-to-earth red, which is a partner in the same price as the down-to-earth white. Um, it's a Tariga National Shiraz blend, which is quite unusual for South Africa. Tariga was brought in years ago mainly for port production, and we just find it a fantastic blending partner for our Shiraz because this is an early drinking red that doesn't have a lot of wood influence. So the Tariga gives it great structure. And then Merlot is by far top selling red in the South African market where 60% of our sales happen. Um, Pinotage more niche on export markets. And the Cabernet Sauvignon has done well in, on export markets as well. Monroe is our flagship red. We have a Monroe bubbly and a Monroe red which basically are at the top end of our and it's a family name, Monroe. All the men in our family's middle name is Monroe. And these just some strap lines that we use, the solar power, do good, feel good. The, the tradition is obviously completely separate from our, from our branding of our still wines. Unlocking nature, physiotherapy, those are all things that are mentioned all over our packaging and our um, material. And then, as I said, once we got our quality sorted out, we started with all our projects. We have a tree planting project where we, our staff grow our trees and we buy them back from them. We've planted over 100,000 indigenous trees in the last five years. And we, they started off small and forests are growing. We have to fence them off to start with, otherwise our wildlife tend to pull them out as soon as we plant them. 
Um, our cellar, basically all our north-facing roofs have got uh, solar panels, so our whole cellar um, and our houses operate on solar. We don't have to rely on our government-generated electricity, which is on the blink half the time. And then we've got um, solar domes as well. We have a recycling no, no waste to landfill project. Uh, we have gardening projects and we have an environment, an environmental center just to educate our staff about environment because there's no point us all being sustainable and, and not having buy-in from our staff. This is our wildlife sanctuary. We get a lot of guys from the US coming. It's a two hour game drive. So we have a whole two hours to talk to people about Valera and what we do. Um, you can see there's zebra ear lunt. We've got huge tortoises. We've got a whole range of, of antelope there. And you would have seen the giraffe and the short clip I showed you early, earlier. And then with social upliftment, it's not only sustainability from, a, from an environmental point of view. We also look after our people. Um, we have the offices of the Pebbles Project on Valero, which are a group of fantastic people that look after uh, thousands of kids in the winelands. They've got creches after schools. They've got a feeding project, a mobile library, um, mobile trucks that come around with access to computers, a toy library. So each week the kids take out a toy, give back their old toy. And then we put in a lot of um, with education with the older kids as well. We have a tertiary education uh, bursary as well. And then all of this, you know, ends up with us winning, winning quite a few green and sustainable awards. This, this year, 2016, we are um, in the Best of Wine Tourism Great Wine Capitals catalog, which is fantastic. They choose... Uh, five different wineries from eight of the top wine producing regions around the world. So obviously the US will be in there, South America, five wineries from South Africa. And they, they choose the different wineries depending on what they special at. And ours was from the sustainable tourism side. That's just in, there is a website you can look at their catalogue. And then we do enter our wines in a lot of international awards because obviously for guys that need to sell our product, they need something to talk about. And so we do, um, you'll see the, both the wines that, that you are tasting, the ones the Cabernet Sauvignon and the others the Chenin Blanc both. The Cabernet got 91 points from Neil Martin, who tastes for Robert Parker, which I suppose is relevant in this market. Um, and then most of our other awards, are, our international awards are based in the UK, but if we start selling more wine in the US, I'd be happy to enter more competitions over here. At the moment, our um, sales in the US are all on the West Coast, and we only export a couple of hundred cases. So it would be really great to do something more on the East Coast, and that's what we're hoping for. Um, our prices, there are some price lists around, and you're welcome to come and ask me, but we go from sort of 13 pounds retail shelf price for the down to earth, um, the varietal wines are between 13 and 15 and then all the way up to 20 for our bubblies and 40 for our prestige cuvee. And then this has got nothing to do with South Africa, but in 2006 we bought a small vineyard in the south of France in the Roussillon, which I have to tell you about because it's part of what we're all about. Greer is our family name. Um, my, my brother is Jeff Greer, I'm Cathy Greer, Mas Brewer. And um, it's basically south of Carcassonne, north of Perpignan. And we've got fantastic 40 to 100 year old vines of Grenache, Carignan, Syrah. And you'll see the, the label is a map of Africa with a little red dot where Cape Town is. And our journey up through Africa to the little cockerel at the top, which is France. And that's basically the story. And um, yeah, so our, our vision is really to be, to be a leading producer and sustainable and to look after our staff and upliftment. It's Human Rights Day today as well and my wedding anniversary, so I'm very popular with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, thanks for listening and I think uh, I know the time is short and I'd rather take some questions if anybody has some. Um, as far as the US market goes, you know, it really depends on who we end up working with. We're happy to come across here. I'm happy to appoint someone to be over here, but it depends on how much the potential is to sell as to how we progress in this market. But we do have quite a bit of point-of-sale material, and 
we do more restaurants than we do um, retail. So we have, you have different point of sale material depending on where your strengths lie. But we do a bit of all of that.